apostasy, defined as the renunciation of one's natal or traditional religion. The Arabic term that is discussed in this context is ridda or irtidad, and it does not correspond exactly to the English term apostasy. Apostasy in English refers to a simple change in faith and implies nothing more. Ridda, however, is not and has never been plain and simple apostasy. The earliest usage of Ridda was in the context of the political revolts that occurred during the reign of Abu Bakr, the first caliph or successor, immediately after the death of the prophet. The punishable offense in this case was the political rebellion and the act of disloyalty to the government in Medina, not the renunciation of Islam. In fact, the tribes implicated in the Ridda Wars did not in fact apostatize in the English sense of the word, but were deemed guilty of treason against the state, which is a punishable offense, even sometimes to the extent of death. Therefore, to say that the majority of pre-modern jurists supported the death penalty for simple apostasy is highly misleading. In the legal understanding of the term, ridda implied treasonous behavior against the state as a consequence of conversion to a different faith. The Quran has no prescribed penalty for mere renunciation of faith. And again, I think Radwan has beaten me to the punch here. But I do want to draw your attention to a verse that, uh, that's already been cited, and that's Quran 2.2.17, which says, And whoever among you turns away from their religion and dies as an unbeliever, their works have failed in this world and the next. These are the inhabitants of the fire. Therein shall they dwell forever. The Quran thus warns of punishment in the next world for renouncing one's religion and dying as an unbeliever. According to this verse, punishment for such an act, however, is clearly God's prerogative and cannot be administered by any human being. It should be pointed out that even when deemed a political offense, Ridda did not always merit the death penalty in the view of the pre-modern jurists. It was left to the discretion of the presiding judge who took the specific circumstances of each case into consideration. 